Hello, I'm Jeremy, and today we're going to take a look at the 21st in my series of Spiel des Jahres, or German Game of the Year Awards. And this is probably the most prestigious award in board gaming. It's given by the German gaming press to the game that they feel will most um, expand the hobby of board gaming. So today we're going to look at the game Alhambra. This is the 2003 winner of the award. It was designed by Dirk Henn. And it was um, essentially a board game version of a card game that he had designed years earlier called Al Capone. Um, this game is still in print. It's sometimes known as Alhambra the Card Game. The version I have is called Bon. The, and uh, this is essentially a game in which players are going to be trying to collect the most well, in the original version, cards, but in this version, tiles of a given color in that so that when a scoring round comes up, they'll get majority scoring points. Um, players will be buying those by using cards of various currencies and essentially trying to pay it with ex exact change because when they do that, they'll get extra turns, which could give them a competitive advantage. This uh, board game version adds essentially a spatial component where players are going to have to be physically building the gardens of their um, Alhambra. And... Um, Otherwise, it's much the same game. So let me take a minute to show you how it plays, and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts on it. So here we have a setup for a three-player game of Alhambra, and you can see that there's basically this board, which is really just a place to stick cards for the most part. And I should mention that I'm using the anniversary edition of the game, which has some component differences, but plays the same as the normal edition. Then the, essentially on the board here, there's this area here for tiles. You'll get a large bag of tiles and these represent different buildings. There's six different colors of tiles and you can see here that each tile has a cost associated with it. And the idea of the game is to collect these tiles and add them to your, your garden, which this fountain here will be the centerpiece of your garden. And you're going to be building along outside that in order to get majorities within the various colors of buildings. So the way that you're going to acquire those is by paying currency that is listed here. So the color of the currencies, these four colors of currencies, have nothing to do with the colors of the tiles. So for example, this one here has a 10 on it. That means it will cost 10 yellow currency. So that is one market. And then there's also a money section of the board. So there are these money cards, which are going to be in the four different colors of currency. And at the start of the game, you'll deal four of those up. And players will get cards until their total hits at least 20. So that'll be a different number of cards for each player. The player with the fewest number of cards here, this player has four cards, will be the uh, first player. And then finally, there is a scoring track around the board to keep score. And there are reserve areas where players could place tiles that they, they buy but do not immediately want to place into their garden. Then you will seed that the uh, deck of money cards with these cards here, which will trigger when scoring uh, will trigger scorings. And you can see that the first scoring starts with few points awarded and only first player will score points. Then the second scoring, uh, first and second player will both score points and the points go up. And then there is finally a game end scoring, which will be worth even more points still and first, second, and third point player, third place in each category of tile will get the uh, rewards. So on a player's turn, what they're going to do is simply one of three actions, and generally one of two. And that would be either to take money or to use that money to buy a tile. So let's see, at the start of the game, this player might choose to take money. And when you choose to take money, you could either take one card that's a value of five or more, so I could take this six or this seven, or you could take multiple cards as long as their value adds up to uh, five or less. So they could, for example, take this two and three both because it t they total up to five, and then that would be the end of their turn, and this uh, display would simply get refilled. Now it'd be this player's turn. And they might choose to buy a tile. So you can see here, the, the, like I said, there are the four different currencies, and this is these are this player's cards. What they might choose to do is use this one and seven in orange currency to buy this tile here, which you could see on it has an eight, a cost of eight. And since it's on next to the orange space, it, you have to pay an orange currency. So the player would turn in that eight money 
and they would take that tile and then they would immediately get to add it to their garden. I'll explain how that works in a minute. Because they played with exact change, however, they will also get a second turn and they could use that second turn to either buy another tile, this space will not refill until the end of this player's turn, or they could use it to grab more money. So as far as tile placement goes, each player, like I said, starts with a fountain, which represents the center of their garden. And any tile that they place next to it, you see it has a built, it'll have a building on it, and you have to be able to trace a route from that building all the way back to the fountain. So with this situation, the player would only be able to place it here because this tile is surrounded by walls on three sides. If we placed it here, here, or here, the player would not be able to trace a route back to this to this fountain. This would be the only legal placement. However, instead of doing that and essentially constraining that side of the uh, building of their, their fountain, they might choose to place this tile into their reserve space. Then in a future turn, instead of doing a money action or a tile buying action, what they can do is they could use their action to either bring this tile down and add it to an empty space in their garden. They could use it to swap a tile that's already been placed. This one would go in the place of another. It has to be that same exact space. Or you could use it if you have a tile here that you've put in a bad spot, just to simply send that one to the reserve to be placed later. So those are that is essentially the third um, option on your turn, just reconfiguring the uh, tiles. So let's say for now that player chooses to leave that there and for their bonus action they just take some money. Then it would be the, the uh, third player's turn and the uh, space would refill here, the money would refill. So on their turn, let's see, they have no ability to make exact change, so they might just instead choose to take money and let's just say that they take this. So essentially this is how the game is gonna play out with these players um, continuing to do this over the course of the rounds until eventually a scoring card comes up. And then oh, let me take a moment to set up a scoring scenario and I'll explain how that works. Okay, so here I've set up a scoring area and I should just make a further note on tile placement. Whenever you're placing a tile in your gardens, um, it will need to be placed orthogonally next to other tiles that have been placed or next to your fountain. Secondly, any tile that has a wall on it will have to be placed so that walls touch other walls or empty space. They cannot be placed next to, so for example, um, this tile here would not be able to be placed here because the bottom of this tile has no wall and walls have to be next to walls. Then um, thirdly, you cannot rotate the tiles. All the tiles have to be with the uh, word on the bottom. So those are the uh, placement rules. Okay, and now back to scoring. So the way that this works is that you'll just score each type of building and you'll just look at who has the most tiles in their garden of that building type. So you would simply look at each type. So for example, the pavilion is worth one point for the player with the most, and this player here has two versus one versus none. So blue would get one point. Then um, you would look at the next type, the you know, red, we have one only here, so that player would get two points, and so on. You would do that for all six types of the building. And again, in the uh, second and the third rounds, you would reward first, second, and third place in each color. After you've done that, Oh, and I should mention that if players tie for the most buildings, they split the points rounded down among any tied players. So after you've done that, then you're going to score points for the longest wall in your uh, region. So for example, this player has a one, two, three, four wall, whereas this player has a one, two, three, four wall also. And then this player has a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wall. So the, they would go four, four, and seven points each respectively. So every round you'll score what the card shows for the colors of the palaces, and then you'll score for your longest wall each time. Um, the game is gonna keep going like this at a certain point in the when you're through the deck. Um, a second card will come out and you'll do a second scoring, and then a third scoring will happen after you go to refill the uh, the the um, tile market with tiles, and there are you cannot bring it back up to four. At that point, what will happen is that um, there'll be some tiles left in the market. Every player will look at how many cards they have or the, how much value they have in each color. Whoever has the most in each color will take any tiles of that color that are available. So for example, whoever had the most green cards left in their hand would get this. If it's a tie, it would just remain there. So do that for each color. And then 
after players will be able to place those into their garden and then you'll do a final scoring both the wall scoring and the palace scoring the player with the most points at the end of that will win alhambra all right so that is alhambra and like i said at the uh, intro this is one of many spiel de jars winners that was first a card game and i think unlike some of the others this one succeeds more as a board game i think of other games that have fallen into this category such as uh, rummy cube such as coloretto and such as keltus each of them is arguably better as a card game than as a board game although opinions vary on that this one i think is almost definitely better as a board game and that's because it adds that spatial puzzle of manipulating those tiles and trying to get that longest wall bonus it's just one little more thing for you to think about while you're playing but it becomes an engaging puzzle and changes the valuation of those tiles for each player based on the uh, needs of their specific garden and i think that the game it's not it does not take much more time to play than the card game version and it's you know still just you know a prettier more enjoyable experience overall I will note that this game does play from two to six players, and I find that it's a little bit slower and a little bit more chaotic with more than, you know, with five or six players than it is with three or four players. Generally, I just would not really suggest playing this with two. It has a dummy variant where basically there's a third player who will just be automatically collecting tiles. Um, it really shines, though, as a three or four player game in my experience. Um, if you do want to play with um, seven or eight players, or, or I'm sorry, five or six players, I would at least suggest getting the first expansion of this for this game, which is called, well, at least the first module of it, it's called the Vizier's Favor. And this is literally just composed of these face up, face, you know, blank tiles. So there's a face on one side, blank on the other. And you would just give one of these to each player, and you could probably do this without even buying anything. But with a multiplayer game, it really enhances it. It basically gives the player the ability to, at the end of another, another player's turn, interrupt the turn order, turn this thing from face up to the blank side, and then pay exact change to take a tile that they need. And then it just gives them, secondly, the option, if it's ever been turned face down, for their turn to just turn it, flip, flip it over again. This is one simple rule that just allows you to have some control over what is a very volatile mar market in a five or a six player game. And it's the one expansion that I always choose to play with when I play this game because otherwise, you know, you often have no ability, in, especially in a high player count game, to grab a tile that you might need when it comes out. I mean, this is le definitely less of a problem if you're playing with three or four players, which is where I think this game shines anyway. I would just suggest that if you're playing five or six players, like I said. Speaking of expansions, though, this game has a ton of them. I think there's something like 21 different expansion modules which have been um, parceled out over the years, and they sell them now all in a Alhambra big box. I don't have that, and I've played some of the expansions over you know various games of this, and generally I just like to keep it to you know the base game with that Vizier's expansion, or maybe one more. Um, it does get... If you put too many of them in it, you dilute the game, it changes it up, it makes it last longer, and it's probably better just to you know, pick one or two. But that does give the game a lot of lifespan. Um, even though the game, the base game is different, just one small modification to the rule really changes up how this game could play and gives you alternate strategies. So it's great that those are out there. And if you're looking to get this game, getting that big box right off the bat might not be a terrible idea. It's not that expensive for what you get in the box. So... Um, Overall, I think that this game's interesting. I like the idea of hand management in it, that you're collecting, you know, at, you, there's value both in high value cards because they allow you to acquire tiles more more easy, easily and in low val value tile cards rather because they make it easier for you to make exact change. I think that's really terrific design uh, perspective. And that ex exact change rule is really terrific as well because essentially you get a whole extra turn just for doing that. So in what's essentially a race game with players racing to, to get tiles to get majorities when those scoring opportunities come up, which always seems to happen at the wrong time, um, getting extra turns you know, will give you a huge edge for sure. Um, but overall, this is a game that you know is very approachable. Um, even people who aren't terribly familiar with board games will be able to pick it up very quickly because you have very simple actions on your turn. Most turns are simply going to be getting money or buying a tile, getting money, buying a tile, and you know what more could you ask for than that? Some a game that gives you some 
you know, decent level of strategy that is approachable rules wise and that is simply, you know, fun to play. Most players will have a simple satisfaction in creating their little um, garden, not necessarily even worrying about competing for majorities. So I think that's a testament to how fun this game is, how approachable this game is, and why it won the Spiel des Jahres Award. So those are my thoughts on Alhambra and thanks for watching.